Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Dark Rose Game Dev Cookbook. It's a pleasure to have you here again. For this video I decided to do something completely different than the usual thing. I decided to start with a different series of tutorials or actually videos that are gonna be more noob friendly and that are gonna explain some basic game dev concepts to all of you people. For the subject of the first video I choose to do a game engine. So what is a game engine? For me personally, when I was a kid, when I was in high school and so on, hearing a word or actually an expression, game engine, uh, didn't mean a lot. Or actually, I thought it was something super cool and something that uh, makes games. Pretty much that's what I thought, and but I couldn't make any more sense out of it. I didn't know what exactly it was. I know that it was the heart of every game pretty much, but I didn't know... Uh, in detail. So this video might help you who might be in the same position to know more about what a game engine is. So let's start with the first point. A game engine is not a single entity. It's like an engine in a car. It consists of many moving parts or many different parts that do a specific thing and then they all together make up this thing called an engine and now you can use that engine to uh, drive your car around and that that's super nice similar thing happens with a game engine a game engine is basically a set of modules that fall in together it's like puzzle pieces falling in together that create that uh, kind of a single entity that you can use to actually create your game. Most popular parts of a game engine are rendering engine, physics, collision engine, uh, AI engine, uh, different kinds of scripting supports. So you can script your game logic, uh, networking supports. So you have networking out of the box. And the main idea of a game engine is to provide you with all these basic modules so you can start building your game pretty fast without building all of these basic things every time you start building your game. Because in the older times, back in the days, every game was being created uh, from scratch. There was no game engines whatsoever. After doing this thing for uh, quite some time, people realized that, well, there we, we do many common things every time we'll build a new game. There are things like just basic rendering or how we'd render sprites on the screen that we re-implement every time we implement our game. And they started creating game engines. Game engine is basically that core or hard component of your game that contains all the basic things you need uh, and enable you to build your game much faster than you would be able to do without uh, an engine. Point two. Game engines are not a finished game, a finished product. Game engine serves you as the base. And in theory, if you shipped a title on the same game engine as you are shipping your next one on, it might be easier for you to start off. However, the game engine itself changes quite a lot and the technology itself moves quite fast. You can just imagine how much work it is actually to adapt a single engine to every new console generation. It's a lot of work and same goes with the custom game code every time you need to build a new title. There's a lot of work included there. However, game engine does make it much, much faster as you don't need to rewrite the basics every time you start off like rendering. Point three. <laughs> Every time you take the game engine code and make a new game with it, it happens that the game itself needs to do something that the engine doesn't support, something super custom. So it might happen that the game team who's working on the game itself and not the engine uses the engine and then needs to change the engine code base, needs to change something in the core of it to actually, or add something in the core of it to actually make it useful for their game. Uh, what happens then is an engine divergence, which means that uh, when you branched off your code for your new game from the engine, you always have that engine version stuck with your game until you try to merge the new game engine version to your title. And that's super hard. Every time you diverge or you branch off to a new title, you change a lot of game engine codebase, which shouldn't be done that often, but if the system that curates the changes uh, is not good enough, or if you don't track those changes well enough, you might be in a big trouble, because you might end up with five different games, changing the game engine so much, each of them, that the game engine doesn't look like the same game engine anymore. And you can just imagine how much work it is to actually, once you want to merge all of it together and have one real engine version that's 
the newest one how uh, how much work that actually is you can just imagine because if you just took a thousand text files dealt the same thousand text files to five different people and told them just to scramble text text around and if you wanted to merge it back together into thousand pieces of text pages that make sense it will be quite hard just with text and you can just imagine how much work it is actually to merge the code back so you don't introduce a major bug that might break the game completely point four okay so now you know what a game engine is each game engine also has a game engine editor. A game engine editor, same as you have the text editor for any form of text editing that enables you to create, edit and save text files. And in the end, the product is a text file. The same thing happens with the game engine editor. You open up your game in, in the game engine editor that enables you to do all sorts of things, starting from uh, game scripting to some art, importing, exporting 3D art and so on. And the result, what you get in the end, is a, a game, basically. Pretty much every big game engine, every good game engine has its own editor that makes it possible for you to easily edit and script your game pretty much fifth thing we're gonna be covering today major game engines of today are mostly unity and unreal engine 4 that are open to everyone to use today so you can right now go and download each of them for free they are quite different unity is much more friendly to programmers that are just starting because it supports scripting your game logic in C-sharp, which is a pretty high-level uh, programming language. On the other hand, Unreal Engine has a really nice editor, same as Unity, but the thing that it has out of the box is that it also supports visual scripting, which Unity also has with some plugins, uh, which enable you to just pull nodes into the scene and connect them, like you're connecting different functions and so on, and by connecting those nodes, you make your game logic. So you can go uh, quite far with Unreal Engine without doing any programming really if you are not for programming but you just like making games so unreal engine is really powerful since it is being uh, maintained and it's created by uh, epic games and you all know epic games by unreal and uh, lately fortnite every major game dev studio has their own in-house game engine or they use unreal or let's say unity for example ea has frostbite that's being used in most of the titles and then you have uh, ubisoft's uh, snowdrop also really powerful engine used in several titles at Ubisoft. At Ubisoft you also have uh, Dunia, for example, CD Projekt Red has a Red Engine and so on. So each major game dev studio has their own engine that they use. It's a non-house engine that they uh, maintain and develop. Now you know the basics, you know that the game engine is a set of modules that are connected in some way or another that provide you with functionality out of the box so you can make your games much more easily. It's really hard if you want to write your own renderer and your own physics engine and so on you can use an engine and just uh, take whatever is there that's pretty much it for today i hope this video was informative enough if you like this video please do give a like if you want to tune in for all of my content in the future please do subscribe turn on notifications as well so you can see whenever i post a new video until the next time stay safe